One thing wrestling fans always love for some reason and have a fascination with is some type of configuration or shape and form of an invasion angle. You know, every time you go to social media or to a wrestling website or some type of social media chat page, somebody will always be that guy. Someone will always be that fan that brings up some type of speculation about an invasion angle or floats it out there, throws it out there like it's some type of great idea. Even though we know that invasion angles, while they sound great in theory, typically are poorly done, executed horribly, and lead to bitter and total disgust and disappointment amongst the fan base. So with this proud history of years of invasion angles being botched horribly, we still always have this incessant desire to believe in them and think that that's just what the wrestling business needs. And maybe in a way, that's a bit of the sick, sadistic nature of us as wrestling fans. We see the history, should be smart enough to learn from it, yet don't learn from it and expect that doing the exact same things that have been bad in the past will somehow magically get better down the road. Maybe we enjoy that, maybe we like it, or maybe it's just the fact that professional wrestling here in the States is that terrible now that what the fuck else do you have to really grab holds of? That's a fair question. I mean, but now I'm seeing people talking about this upcoming Global Force Wrestling TNA invasion angle is going to be good, and it's giving TNA a shot in the arm. It's giving them some much-needed life. It's getting them off of life support, and this is going to be good, and this is going to be interesting and compelling. No. Based off of history, this is going to be dumb. And the whole concept of this invasion angle is stupid and is going to be stupid, and everybody damn good and well knows it. Now, in my mind, here are some reasons why you would want to do an invasion angle. These type of things can make sense, and if done right, can really make for compelling, interesting television. To me, you do invasion angles to give some life to your product. Uh, create kind of a feeling of spontaneity. You know, give an element of must-see television. You know, all of a sudden, if you've got new faces coming in and new type of things happening, especially things you didn't see coming, you know, people are going to perk up a little bit. Uh, they're going to be wondering what's going to happen next. It's going to make them want to tune in and see more and find out what's going to happen next. And God knows that's something that is desperately missing in professional wrestling today. Another reason you would do an invasion angle is to potentially get some new eyeballs on your product. You know, if you're this company and you got this type of audience or this size of audience and this company has this size of audience, some of the fans might cross over, but some of them are completely unique and different. For both parties involved, an invasion angle can make some sense because you're getting some new eyeballs on your product. On top of that, you're getting your product new avenues of exposure. Maybe one company is on one television network and another company is on another television network. This company has a website. That company has a website. So you're cross-promoting, and it can be mutually beneficial to all parties involved. It really can be. You also could be potentially getting a different type of audience demographic. Like if you're wrestling company A and you appeal a lot to, let's say, hardcore male fans 18 to 34 – but company B here maybe is stronger with kids and with families. Maybe you want to get more of these fans. Maybe they want to get more of your fans. It's a way to potentially expand the demographics of your audience. And sometimes, most importantly of all, it's a way to get some new talent on your product. Because no matter how good your talent is, no matter how good your writing is, you know, when all said and done, a lot of times you end up recycling the same stuff and the same people and the same type of stories against the same type of opponents in the same type of ways. So getting new talent that can mean fresh uh, characters, fresh feuds, and fresh feeling stories, even if the stories are fundamentally the same, they're done in different ways with different people, you know, creating those new different feeling type of storylines can really be beneficial to a product. So looking at it from that standpoint, those are some of the things to me that you want an invasion angle to do and why you would do them. And I can understand the appeal of them to wrestling fans and sometimes wrestling promotions. Because if properly planned, if executed properly, they could, in theory, deliver those things. 
But it's so often the case they don't because of this, because of egos, because of stupidity, because of lack of vision and planning, and they ultimately don't. But when we come here to this whole thought of a TNA global farce wrestling, as I would call it, invasion angle, this is just ridiculous to me, most especially from the standpoint of TNA, because when all said and done, where is the benefit for TNA of all of this? You know, to me, you would want to get into this type of angle because it's mutually beneficial and it would help both parties involved. And if you're TNA, you're ultimately looking, yeah, it's nice if it helps them, but I want it to help us the most. Where is this going to help TNA the most? What's exciting about an invasion angle with a no-name fed? Global Force Wrestling is a no-name fed, period. Where in the hell is the benefit for that with TNA? Whereas opposed to at least, at least, if they were doing an invasion angle with an ROH, they would be on the same network, Destination America, going to maybe an audience with a different demographic or you know stronger in that particular demographic. And you're also maybe getting yourself some exposure on a different avenue through Sinclair Broadcasting Channels. That could be an invasion angle that would benefit TNA in terms of additional exposure. Here, you're basically being invaded by a no-name Fed. Where the fuck does that help your company's ever-dwindling credibility? And instead of this feeling like something that is spontaneous and something that you can't wait to see what happens, you just feel it. It's a planned, telegraphed angle, and they're not even really trying to hide it or deny it. Part of the thing of an invasion angle is the element of surprise. If you take away the element of surprise, why the fuck are you doing it? I mean, what does either company, frankly, right now know about must-see television? Global Force Wrestling doesn't even have television. And TNA most certainly doesn't create must-see television on a consistent basis, if ever at all. So these two companies that don't know how to do it all of a sudden are going to come together and give you one compelling thing that's really going to make you have to sit there every week and watch to wonder what the fuck's going on? Furthermore, where would the new eyeballs be for TNA? You're dealing with a no-name fed in Global Force Wrestling that's doing television tapings without even having a television deal that just had a show draw 150 people. Now, maybe for TNA from a house show standpoint, they call that a good night. I don't know. But where are the new eyeballs? Where the fuck are Global Force Wrestling's eyeballs? And what are they bringing to the table for you? They're not bringing anything to the table for you. They're not bringing you new eyeballs. They're not bringing you new exposure. Because again, while Global Force Wrestling technically has their own social media and they have their own website, they don't even have a television deal. So you're doing an invasion angle where the only place that anything is going to happen is on your television. That makes absolutely no sense. There's no crossover there. There's no ability to get new eyeballs, a new demographic on your product. And talking about demographics, what different demographic is a Global Force Wrestling going to bring to TNA? A brand new company that really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things that, again, doesn't even have their own television deal. What the hell demo are they going to bring you? If anything, you've got a few people that have a fascination with Global Force Wrestling that are already watching TNA to begin with. And furthermore, part of the whole thing about these invasion angles, again, as I've referenced before, it's a way to get new talent on your product. Work out and see these new talents and maybe say, at some point in time, I want to work with that guy. But how are old TNA names new talent? When you look at the Global Force Wrestling roster, there are loads of old TNA people. So this is more of the same, not something different, something fresh, something new. The whole invasion can plan choreograph bullshit that's coming up revolves around Jeff and Karen fucking Jarrett. How is this any different for TNA? Seriously. The Young Bucks, Doc, Chris Saban, Sonata, Sanjay Dutt, and now you throw into the mix possibly Magnus and James Storm. Instead of getting new talent on your product, and bringing something fresh and something different. And something they actually feel like it would be Global Force Wrestling. You know, with a name like Global, you would think you would be maximizing your international flavor. And giving something for everyone of all different shapes and sizes and styles and looks. 
but instead is basically like the rest of North American professional wrestling. It's a bunch of white guys that have already worked for TNA in the past. And yeah, fuck it, I'll throw Sanjay Dutt and even Sonata in that damn group. You're going to build an invasion angle around Jeff Jarrett. So in 2015, it's still about Jeff Jarrett for TNA. It's not 2002. And how many power struggles or invasion things can TNA do? You would have thought that aces and eights would have been the end of it. Or 10, 10, 10. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. You would think of all the years of all that shit, Main Event Mafia, and all this other crap, that the power struggles, the invasion angles, you would have had enough of it. You'd be done with it, and you try to do all you can to get the fuck away from them. But no, TNA. Like the fucking flies that are attracted to the zappers, they just can't get enough. They sadistically want more, more, more. And the, the whole stupid thing about this for TNA especially is that the only real winners are Global Force Wrestling, excuse me, Global Farce Wrestling, and Jeff fucking Jarrett. Here's what happens. Jeff Jarrett gets television time, gets exposure for both himself, which he desperately craves, and for his company, which is of secondary importance to him. You are basically allowing your television time that is a precious commodity to you, especially when you don't know how much longer you're going to have it, to sit there and go to a guy that for so many years dominated everything you did with television that now owns a different company. I mean, seriously, and the whole talk of, well, maybe they'll merge and become one. Yeah, because Jeff Jarrett for so many years did such a whiz-bang job of running TNA, right? <sighs> He's doing such a whiz bang job of drawing 150 people to Pearl, Mississippi. Jesus Christ. So you're using TNA resources, TNA television time, to get over Jeff Jarrett and another promotion. Because that works so well with Russell One, right? That works so well for everybody TNA ever does business with, right? Now, Global Force Wrestling gets TNA television time to promote themselves. Global Force Wrestling gets a backdoor way to a primetime television deal, especially considering they don't fucking have one. And the best of my knowledge, they don't have a television deal at all. They're doing TV tapings without a television home to show them on. And Global Force Wrestling's the one that gets new talent for their shows, not TNA. They're the ones that get the Bobby Roods. They're the ones that get the Magnuses. They're the ones that get the James Storms. And all the while, TNA just gets back in return. Jeff Jarrett, the Young Bucks, and fucking Chris Saban! And Magnus and James Storm! How does this make any fucking sense for TNA? It doesn't! It's just another stupid example showing just how pathetic and desperate this company is and how idiotic and out of touch the people running this company freaking are. Oh, wait, newsflash, Bram just resigned with TNA for the 36th time the past six weeks. How pathetic and desperate can you be? Living a hardcore fan's dream, trying to book another shitty invasion angle, this time with a company that brings you absolutely nothing to the freaking table. Except their egomaniacal owner that used to be your egomaniacal owner for freaking years that dominated your television for years. You're going right back to that shit again. And ultimately, because only TNA thinks this is a good idea, they're taking their television time, their money, their resources, and their talents to put over another freaking promotion. If you think that this is going to be some type of good deal, or you think this is something that is actually exciting to you, then God bless you. Because I don't know how the fuck you could think anything other than this angle being a bad idea is right. A TNA global farce wrestling angle is fucking stupid. And I hope if you didn't understand before you watch this video, you understand now why that's the case.